guys, welcome to the studio. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I tip and pour my glazes. This is just one of many ways that you can apply glazes to your pieces. And I find for functional wear and things like cups and mugs and bowls and vases and the list goes on and on, it's really the fastest and easiest way to apply glaze. So I have in front of me the Chun glaze that you would have seen me making in my most recent series of videos on glazes. And I did just mix it up with my electric mixer that you would have seen also in those videos, but I'll show it to you again in case you in case you don't want to go back. So here it is. Ta-da! It has a plaster mixing bit on the bottom. And give that a good mix. So I always mix it up right before I use it, and if I'm doing a long glaze session, I will end up remixing over and over throughout that session just because you know, glaze thing, gla glaze particles settle. Nah, that's the short of it. Okay, so what do you need? You need something to glaze, you need a glaze, and for dipping and pouring, I need, you need an object to do the pouring part. And I'm just using a little plastic measuring cup that I have that I've been using for my glazing so far today. All right, so a little bit before you actually glaze your piece. First, you should sand anything down, and if you're sanding, make sure you wear a mask, the same type of mask you would use for mixing glazes, so one with a P100 cartridge that filters out down to 0.3 micron particles. That's important. So you want to clean this off, sand it down if you need to, wipe it down with clean water inside and out. So I usually do that the day before I glaze. Also, I wax the bottoms, and the wax I use here is just the Amico wax. It's a fine wax, it's not my favorite, but it's just what I have on hand. It's dyed green so you know where you put it, which is handy. Uh, honestly, I really love the Forbes wax on the bottom of pots, and when I'm doing the carving on my Mishima work, I like the Mr. Marks wax on. So I use three different waxes in my studio. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, so let's get to the dipping and pouring. I'm not sure why it's called dipping and pouring, because you do the pouring before the dipping. It should be pouring and dipping, but it doesn't sound as good as dipping and pouring. So, the pouring part. So just dip, <laughs> there we go, dip. As I say, dip. So you just dip and pour throughout. You wanna dip your little pouring container into the glaze, and you're gonna pour that into the cup. And I usually fill it up all the way to the top, and I sit that back down on the lid, and then I just pour out the excess. And you want to do this in one smooth fluid motion to get a nice even coat of glaze on the interior. And you can see, if you look down in, it's a bit shiny, and that's because the glaze hasn't absorbed into the clay yet and is still wet. So I will do a whole row of, of cups, mugs, whatever I'm working on, and I'll just set them up on the counter and I'll let them dry. And when that shininess is gone, I know that I can then do the dipping part. Now, handily enough, I have one that I glazed earlier sitting right here. And I'm just checking to make sure and that's good to go. So when I do cups, when I do the dipping part, I put my hands inside the cups. And it may be because, oh well, I've got little hands so they'll fit in my cups, but as makers, I think we make objects in relation to our own bodies. So I always make cups that my hands fit in and I assume if you make pots, you make them so your hands fit in because your hands were in them to make them, right? So I'm sure your hands will fit in your cups as well. So I put my hand in the cup and I spread my fingers out while it's in the cup and that supports it. So I, that's what I'm doing now. Fingers are holding cup. And keeping it nice and level, I'm just going to dip it straight down and right out. And then I hold it at an angle and do a little shaky, shaky, shaky. Shake it up. All right and keeping nearby a damp sponge. I just twist and wipe that bottom. And I didn't really have to wipe much because I did wax it, but the glaze still will build up on the wax. You still have to wipe the glaze off the waxed area. Waxing doesn't mean you don't have to wipe it. It just means that the pot won't have to be scrubbed free of glaze. All right, so after this, I will set it aside. And then there's one more step there's one more step. So that has to dry completely, and it's really, really wet right now. Ew, get back. And I bumped it so I have a little crummy I have to fix on the top. So the next step I'm going to illustrate on this one because that one's too wet to pick up. 
All that I have left to do is there's a tiny bit on that one that doesn't have glaze right here on the tippy top of the handle and just around the rim. So you could start with this one and then dip the other way, but I just do it my version. So I'm just going to turn it upside down, dip it in, shake it off good, and you'll get a little bead of glaze and I'll just let that roll around and dry. And I do that so it dries evenly. And I think that's good. You don't want to flip it over too soon or you'll get this drip of glaze. Now you might want that, but this glaze runs and it'll be a much darker streak and I don't really want that on this piece. So there, that's how you do the room. So basically this is how you dip and pour. And I do the same thing for bowls. The only difference being in the dipping part of a bowl, if it's a big one, I will use both my hands on the inside or I will hold it by the rim and dip it down till it's about a half an inch from my finger, pull it up, wait for that to completely dry, turn it over, and then dip the rim separately. So dipping and pouring is easy. You get a nice consistent surface, great glaze results, and you should try it. Okay guys, so that's the next in my glaze series of videos here on my channel. I hope you enjoy it. As always, I love to hear your feedback and your suggestions and anything else you like to say. And um, yeah, I'm done. That's it. I'm out. As you know, I don't really, I don't edit. I don't really edit. No, I just don't edit. So I know some people don't like that. It makes them crazy and I'm sorry, but this is my life and I would rather be making the pots and working in the studio and not sitting in front of a computer editing all my videos. So if you can't stand like raw real life stuff, you're not going to enjoy this. But if you don't mind that, hang out with me and you'll enjoy it. Subscribe to the videos and uh, give me a thumbs up. Catch you guys next time in the studio.